iOS 18 is now out and it has completely changed the way we interact with scroll views. Today, we're going to dive into the five most game-changing scroll view features that are going to redefine how we design, develop, and experience app with scrollable content. And by the end of this tutorial, you guys will learn how to implement all of these incredible new features available to us with the iOS 18 scroll view updates. We'll be able to see things like the scroll offset, the scroll phase, as you guys can see here, it goes from interacting to decelerating to idle. We'll also be able to um, monitor scroll geometry changes. And one of my favorite new features is the ability to very simply scroll to either the top, the bottom, or a random element in the scroll view, guys. And there's a couple other awesome features we'll be looking at as well. So let's go ahead and dive into the code and get started. So to get things started, guys, we are going to create our data set, which is just going to be a very simple array of colors. And then we are going to create a scroll view and display all of these rectangles as we see in the completed version of the app. And I'm just gonna paste that in there. You guys can go ahead and pause the video and type that out, but it's pretty straightforward. And this is currently what we have, right? It's a very simple and straightforward scroll view. And the first feature we're gonna be implementing, guys, is the ability to scroll to the bottom, to the top, and to any random element in the scroll view. So we're gonna implement these action buttons next. So let's go ahead and right click on that scroll view and select embed in Z stack. And we are going to give this an alignment of dot bottom trailing. And I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the code for these action buttons. Very simple V stack. And it's just gonna be an image with these system names, these dimensions, and we have not yet implemented the action handlers. That's what we're gonna be doing next but you guys should notice you should be able to tap these guys here. So obviously this one will scroll to the top, this one to the bottom, and this one will make it scroll to a random element. So we are gonna head up to the top of our file and we're gonna create a state property and it's gonna be called scroll position and we're gonna check out the documentation for this, guys. This is a new struct available to us in iOS 18. And if we look at the overview, it helps us scroll to a view with either a provided identity, some sort of offset, or some sort of anchor edge, like top, bottom, leading, trailing, whatever it may be. So we're gonna use this new scroll position to help us accomplish our scroll actions of scrolling to the top, the bottom, or a random element. So there's just a very simple modifier we need to set up. We're gonna go on our scroll view here. We're gonna say dot scroll position. And you guys will notice this associates a binding to a scroll position with a scroll view within this view. So we are basically just linking this state property um, with this modifier so that we can monitor our scroll views scroll position. And we are just gonna go ahead and pass that in there. And guys, we're gonna hop down to our button action handlers and we're gonna see that we can very simply just say scroll position dot scroll to. And we'll notice all of the different uh, options we have here, X, Y, edge, point, or ID. We're gonna select edge right now. And this one will be top. And the bottom arrow will simply scroll to the bottom. So pay attention to our scroll view in the preview now, guys. Red is at the top. Now this teal sort of color is at the bottom. And if I hit up, it goes all the way back up to the top. Bottom, it goes all the way back down to the bottom. We notice that's not exactly the smoothest transition though. So we're gonna wanna implement an animation to make this user experience and, inner, and uh, overall UI a lot cleaner and smoother. So guys, we're gonna go here and below that say dot animation. And we could say dot spring and we could link the value to our scroll position. So anytime that scroll position changes, it is going to implement that spring animation. And we can go here and we can see that we now have that beautiful animation with that scrolling transition available to us to scroll to the top and the bottom of our scroll view. And next up guys, let's see how we can scroll to a particular element in the scroll view rather than just the top or the bottom. So let's imagine I wanted to scroll down to the green option here. Let's see where that is in our array. It's at index zero, one, two, three, four. So I can go here and now say scroll position dot scroll to a particular ID. And we could just say colors at index four. And with that simple line of code, if I hit this now, guys, it scrolls directly to that item in my scroll view. And that's feature number one. It is super simple to use this scroll position to manually scroll to certain anchors or particular items in our scroll view now. Uh, previously with scroll view, guys, that was actually pretty annoying and complicated to do. So I'm really glad SwiftUI made these improvements. Next up, guys, what I want us to do is dive into this new modifier that is going to help us determine if a particular item is visible on the screen within our scroll view. 
So guys, we are gonna go into this for each loop and I'm actually realizing now that we don't need this V stack so we can just cut our rounded rectangle code and put it inside the for each loop. We're gonna go and add this modifier called on scroll visibility change. So this adds an action to be called when the view crosses a certain threshold to be considered on versus off screen. So this is super, super powerful guys. Probably my second favorite feature of all of the updates and we're saving the best for last, so make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video. Basically, guys, we're gonna be able to attach an action here in this block and determine if the item is visible on the screen or not. So I'm gonna say if is visible, let's just go ahead and say print color is visible. So let's go ahead and pull up our console, and guys, as I scroll, oh, let me pull this down a little bit, you'll notice that cayenne is visible here. And then as I go down, it hasn't triggered yet for green, but I keep going, oh, now green is visible. So then keep going, now yellow is visible. So this is super powerful for when we wanna perform particular actions when an item comes onto the screen in our scroll view, guys. So for example, with something like our TikTok clone, this feature is incredibly useful because we only wanna perform certain actions when we scroll to a new item, right? So if I scroll up, or down, I wanna perform an action like playing the next video or the previous video. And before iOS 18, guys, this was extremely difficult to accomplish and I had to do a bunch of hacky functionality to get that to work. But with iOS 18, it's as simple as using this on scroll visibility change modifier and performing a particular action when an item becomes visible. And if you guys wanna check out our pro courses and app clones like that TikTok clone you just saw, make sure you check out the website at stephancodes.com. The link is in the description to this video. TikTok's right here. We also have Tinder, Instagram, Messenger, Threads, Airbnb, and Uber uh, in our pro app clones. And then guys, we also have a bunch of fundamentals courses as well for things like concurrency, intermediate and advanced fundamentals. If you're just getting started with programming, that's this guy here, Swift UI Bootcamp, a bunch of awesome stuff. And we also have pro plus app clones now. Uh, led by myself, an ex-meta engineer, where you, you can learn how to build production-ready applications like Instagram or Messenger that can scale to over a million users, guys. And you guys can also become a member with us to get access to this content uh, for a low cost of less than a coffee a day, guys. So you can check out everything that the membership includes. Uh, and the link for all of this is in the description to this video. So now let's go ahead and get back to our scroll view tutorial. So feature number three, guys, is going to allow us to monitor the scroll offset. As we can see here, I can detect exactly how far I have scrolled uh, on my Y axis, or I could potentially monitor the X axis as well, depending on the direction of my scroll view. So let's go ahead and see how simple it is for us to implement that. We can go on our scroll view ending bracket, guys, and say dot on scroll geometry change. And we're, we're gonna get three inputs, four, and we're gonna monitor a CG float.self. We're gonna be looking at the Y offset here particularly, and then go over here and we're gonna hit enter. And this is where we, what we want to monitor. So I'm gonna say, look at my geometry reader in there, and I'm gonna say geometry.contentoffset.y. So this will make sure it monitors only the, the Y offset of my scroll view. I could particularly change this to monitor the content size, or offset or container size or content insets. Uh, but I'm, I'm gonna just use this option to show you guys how to accomplish this. And here is our action handler. So we get a look at the old value and the new value. Here, we're just gonna print guys, the new updated Y offset that we have. So we can say print Y offset is our new value. And if I open up my console and I start to scroll, you guys will notice that it gives me back the Y offset for my scroll view there. So this can be super helpful for monitoring things like how far the user has scrolled down or performing a certain action if the Y offset is greater or less than a certain value, guys. And this can also work in combination with our scroll position. If you guys remember, let's say we go down here, I could also say something like scroll position dot scroll to a particular point or like Y value or X value. So that could be used in combination with that as well. You can really see the amount of flexibility that we have here with these new scroll view updates and how easy it is to perform actions like this or monitor what is going on or happening in our scroll view. So that brings me to feature number four, which is going to be monitoring our, monitoring our scroll phase, guys. So we have another modifier that's going to be able to allow us to track the changes in scroll phase. So as I can see here, guys, if I hold down and scroll, it's interacting. If I let go and it's doing nothing, it's idle. 
if I'm scrolling and it's slowing down, it becomes decelerating. Or if it's actively animating, you'll see that the, the briefly there, it says animating. So this gives us a lot of control and flexibility to potentially perform certain actions on change of this scroll phase, guys. So let's go ahead and see how we can implement this. On my, right above this modifier here, we can say dot on scroll phase change, hit enter there and hit enter again. And you guys will see, we'll get access to both the old phase and the new phase. So what it was before it changed and then what it became. So here guys, we could say print old phase, old phase, new phase, new phase. And before we do anything there, guys, I'm gonna comment out these other print statements so we don't clog up our console too much. And I'm just gonna actually go ahead and run the app, guys. My preview printing is being a little weird. So now we'll see that if I start to scroll, we can see all of the different changes in phase, guys. So I go here, I could click a button and we'll see it's animating, and then it changes back from animating to idle. And this just gives us a lot of control, as I stated before, with being able to perform certain actions on change of this scroll phase. So you could do things like add custom header animations or opacity animations or things like that. If the user starts to scroll or ends the scroll or starts decelerating, we just have a lot of control and flexibility with this super simple modifier here. And for feature number five, guys, I wanna show you how we can implement these incredible animations where as items come into view on the screen, we can animate them with a scale and opacity animation for a beautiful user experience. So what I want us to do is go onto this V stack we have here, guys, and we're gonna add a modifier that's called scroll target layout. Basically what this means is we are targeting this V stack of items uh, when we scroll to perform a particular action. Then after that, outside of that bracket, we are going to say on scroll target visibility change. And we're going to say ID type threshold and action. So I'm gonna make sure I get all of those options in there. Our ID type is going to be color.self. And my threshold can be 0 0.3. And my action will be colors in. So let me make this a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger there. And uh, guys, what this is gonna do is it's gonna, say, it's gonna allow us to view the visible items on the screen. So I'm gonna create a state uh, property up at the top to keep track of the visible colors that I have. So I'm gonna say state private var visible colors is equal to a blank array of colors. And here, we're just gonna say that self dot visible colors is equal to colors. And we have this threshold here, guys, where it has to be at least 30% visible to be considered like on screen. We could modify or adjust this threshold based on the functional requirements of our application, but that's what we're gonna do here for now. And we're gonna perform a simple scale and opacity modifier to uh, perform this awesome animation that we see here. And we'll notice that it performs as we scroll up and down with our actions here as well. On each rectangle, guys, we're gonna add these very two simple modifiers. I'm going to say that my scale effect is going to be if visible colors dot contains this particular color, yes, it'll just be one. No, it'll be 0 0.8. And the opacity will be 0.5 if it's not visible and one if it is. So let's go ahead and resume our preview. And guys, we'll notice that as we start to scroll, we'll get that beautiful animation coming in with just a couple lines of code, man. So you guys notice here that this item, because it's not visible yet, it's smaller. It has a scale of 0 0.8 and an opacity of 0 0.5, whereas these are fully in view. So they have a scale effect of one and a opacity of one. And as that, when that guy becomes 30% visible, as we saw there with our threshold, uh, then it's going to animate like that, right? But you guys will notice the animation isn't super smooth. And that's because, guys, we haven't set an animation in correspondence to this visible colors array. So what we can do is maybe like on our V stack right here, we could say like dot animation, which is going to be like dot bouncy maybe. And yeah, let's make it dot bouncy and let's make the value our visible colors. So let's see how this looks. You guys notice that that is much better, right? We just had to attach an animation to that. 
And look at this uh, beautiful scroll transitions, guys. It's super simple for us to accomplish that with just a couple lines of code. And guys, you'll notice that if I modify this threshold to like 0.5, we'll notice that it takes longer for that animation to occur, right? If it's 1.0, let's see what that looks like. It's going to wait until, yeah, that's actually pretty messy. But uh, you know, you can play around with some different values just to get the exact functionality that you want. I think 0.3 is great because you'll notice that as an item goes off screen up there, uh, it starts to it animates out, and this one animates in, right? So, guys, that's uh, feature number five. And now for our last and final feature, which is a bonus feature, I want to show you guys something really cool. So uh, I'm going to open up my Messenger application. This is our Messenger Pro Plus app, guys. Something that was really hard to accomplish with this was getting the scroll view to default at the bottom. And it was overall just a genuine nightmare to get this to work. Really hacky implementations that felt like you were fighting against the native functionality of the system. But that has been fixed in the scroll view updates with iOS 18. Guys, we can just go ahead and go to our final bracket on our Z stack here, and we can say dot default scroll anchor, and we could just set it to bottom right away. And you guys will notice that once my preview gets it back up and running, uh, that this should, yep, it just defaults right to the bottom there. So that helps you when you need custom scroll imp implementations like for something like a messaging app or some sort of custom event feed. And that is going to wrap it up for the iOS 18 scroll view updates, guys. We had five awesome features there, plus an incredible bonus feature, as we saw just now. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content like this. And make sure you check out the website at stephancodes.com for more pro courses and ready-made app templates. And you guys can become a member with us to gain full access, unlimited access to all of our pro content. So if you guys are serious about leveling up your skills, make sure you check out all of our premium content on the website. And guys, we have a lot more content coming your way this year. Uh, I'm putting this out there. I made a goal to make over 150 YouTube videos and that's about three a week. So that's what you guys can expect here. And I wanna get over 50,000 subscribers. So guys, make sure you tell your friends about me and make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. So we'll see you in the next one, man. Peace out. Thanks for watching.